Tonight I got the request to watch an episode of Crash and Bernstein, a full 22 minute episode. I said, good God, why do you want to hurt me? Now I've made fun of Crash the puppet character before on my videos because shows with one puppet tend to freak me out. That goes back to a show from the 90s called Kino Storytime where there was one puppet character. Why is there only one? What happened to the others? Who knows? And he stared you down in the opening, which deeply unnerved me, so I never watched the show. I got so much of that same vibe from this show. But I thought, you know what? It is worth giving the show a fair shot. It's Halloween season. <laughs> Face your fears. So I did watch it. Take everything I'm about to say with a grain of salt. Because I am well past the target age for Disney Channel original shows. I know it's not geared towards me. And the other thing is, I know how hard the people making these shows work. Because I've spoken to writers who work on shows like this and who work on Nickelodeon shows. Because Disney and Nickelodeon tween show writers tends to be the same crowd. They work their butts off and they have to answer to the studio. They have to answer to quite a few people above them. And the networks have to answer to the FCC. These shows don't get a ton of budget and kids shows, especially tween shows, are not seen as very desirable among writers. So people who go into it tend to love it. And that deserves a lot of respect. That and they have to listen to a lot of people and they can't do a lot of things that to a lot of us would seem like, wait, really? You couldn't do that? Just because there are so many strict regulations. That being said, I wasn't a fan. It I don't like Crash as a character. Now, he's supposed to be this mischievous prankster, gets you into trouble, and I, I get the fantasy behind that. Oh, it's fun to be bad. Go indulge a bit. But the show really did not have a sense of fun to it. It felt pretty unpleasant. Now, granted, I'm someone who watches Angela and Anaconda. A lot of people say that's unpleasant. I could see that. I can see how someone would think that. For me, that was Crash and Bernstein. It wasn't translating to me. So if you like it, if you if someone who likes the show stumbles upon these videos, I'm not trying to hate on anyone who likes the show. I'm not trying to hate on anyone who works on it. I feel like that can't be said enough. But Crash and Bernstein really felt mean. And I'm not going to say that this is something only new Disney Channel shows do. I watched Disney Channel original shows growing up, and a lot of these tropes were there too. They like a lot of insult comedy among friends, and but they'll just be nakedly insulting each other. Now the mom says something to her son, Wyatt, the Bernstein of Crash and Bernstein, like, oh, oh, really, you? You're not responsible. Something like that, and I know real parents say that, but the way it's delivered just didn't feel, it felt more mean. It felt like there was an anger behind it. Uh, there's a scene where the youngest sibling uh, slams a door in a, the manager's face. That felt like there was an anger to it. And I, th I thought, wow, if that were me, I'd have been punished so hard for that. Because she said it with a bit of anger in her voice. Now, she was annoyed that she was, she was annoyed that she was interrupted from a game. Fair enough. <laughs> but there was still just felt like there was an anger and a meanness behind it. That was personally hard for me to watch. I didn't feel a sense of camaraderie with the family. I didn't feel a sense of camaraderie with the si the sisters. And what it goes through is relatable. He's the only boy in a family of sisters. He wants a guy to hang out with, so he makes one. That is Crash. I don't like Crash as a character. I find him unlikable. I find him annoying. There are good jokes in there, though. I'm not going to say that this is totally awful, because, no, there are some really good moments in there. There are good jokes. There's a joke where Crash says, oh, time to check my bucket list, so he has a list in front of him. Red bucket, yellow bucket, floral bucket. <laughs> that was really funny. 
He also gets subjected to a lot of violence, which I greatly appreciate. The first scene, he gets thrown off a roof. I was so happy. <laughs> and stuff like that is very funny. So there are talented people here. And they're... The guy who plays the manager, Mr. Poulos, is a legitimately really good actor. Now he's, for millennials stumbling upon this, he's the Mr. Mosby of this show, the manager of the building who has to manage the trouble this family gets into and most of it Crash's fault. He had a really good sense of comic timing. He delivers lines really well and he was, he felt like he had some fun to him. He felt like, he felt like he was at least enjoying it. He knew the type of show he was in. He was handling this role really, really well. So I looked him up. The actor is Danny Woodburn. Also, the fact that he's a little person was really cool, and no one, and it, no one's pelting him with short jokes. That's not, they're not just making fun of his height, which is great. That's wonderful to see. He was a legit character in that he was the stick in the mud manager, which, Characters like that I appreciate more as an adult because I see them as, okay, this is a person clearly just trying to do their job and this family does get into more trouble than, they, than it is needed. I think people are responding to Mr. Mosby from Sweet Life of Zack and Cody for the same reason. That and Phil Lewis was a good actor. But Danny Woodburn, he was on Seinfeld. He, he's been working since 1991. He has decades of experience and it really shows. So I hope he get, continues to get work. He's good. He's really good. I thought he was the best, the best performer, the one who really stood out to me. Uh, the others, I mean, they're, I'm sure they're good in other things. Because I know this is just a Disney Channel style. Again, they did this a lot in the past, too. But some of these tropes that, that are, are hard for me now, there was a lot of noise for no reason. Uh, there's one where... There's a scene where they're trying to make as much noise as possible. Uh, the one girl's playing a trumpet, a guy comes in playing the bagpipes, the youngest girl's screaming as a parent, I, I would want to turn this off. There almost didn't, didn't feel that coherent either, but you know what? If people like it, people like it. That's pretty much what, all I gotta say on it. There are good jokes in there. There is talent behind it. I know full well how hard some of those writers work, the production works. You've really got to get creative because they really don't get a high budget. They don't get a ton of resources, so they really got to get creative. And, but much respect to anyone who does this because Disney Channel does have a huge audience. So... Those are my thoughts. I'm glad I gave it a chance. I'm really glad I discovered Danny Woodburn because he is good. I kind of want to watch him in more stuff. I want to watch his Seinfeld episode. <laughs> we actually got that pulled up right now. He played Mickey Abbott, a friend of Kramer's, in case you're wondering. I'm still afraid of demon puppets. 